This is the Feel World NDI 20X PTZ camera, the first PTZ camera to come from Feel World. So we're gonna do a quick open box here, and I just want you to know that I am not being paid to do this. Uh, this was not sent to me for free. I did pay full price for this camera, and we're using it for a live stream build out for a client of ours. So just a couple of important details to knock out real quick before we open the box. Uh, this is the Feel World NDI 20X. I have my little cheat sheet back here. It's $999. This is uh, NDI HX with PoE, so it can be powered over ethernet. Uh, up to 1080p at 60 frames per second, but it can also do 720p at various frame rates. We've got a 20x optical zoom, which is pretty decent. Could get you a nice throw from the back of a boardroom. Uh, low light correction built in, autofocus. It does both H.264 and .265 encoding, and the remote can do up to 10 preset positions. So you might not have to have a controller if you're just using the infrared remote that comes with it to uh, control a couple of preset positions in the room. Some other factors to consider, it's a one over 2.9 inch CMOS sensor. Uh, we've got a 5.5 .5 to 110 millimeter focal length and it's an f1.6 to f3.5. So the f-stop does change as you zoom in over time. That means that your image is most likely going to get a little bit dark on the far end of it. So let's jump into this unboxing. And uh, I've got an HDMI cord, a power cord. We'll power this up. We'll actually hook it in, see what sort of image we can get out of this, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, this box was uh, not very specially designed by any means, not meant to be like a, an Apple unboxing or anything. And uh, that's okay. Let's see what we have. So some foam packaging to get through. And uh, okay, nice thick manual. That's a change from what we usually get with devices like this, especially when they're coming out of China. Sometimes you'll get like a one-sheeter. Uh, so it looks like we've got a pretty, pretty hefty user manual here. Um, yeah, and it's not one of those ones where like, you know, it's only 10 pages, but in multiple languages. This is a solid, uh, looks like 50, 52 page manual that gives you a lot of information about the camera. So I'll definitely have to come back to that to learn a little bit more on the operation side. So I'm gonna just shift this over to the side here. Right off the bat, uh, we've got some connectors. We've got our remote and some more packing foam, which reveals the camera. Oh, ignore the arm, by the way, small injury. I'm totally okay. So this is our PTZ camera from Feel World. And coming in at $999, it's actually a pretty good price. A lot of the PTZ cameras in the 20 to 30X range are coming in somewhere between about $1,500 to $1,800. So to be able to save you know, somewhere around five to $700 off the price of your camera is convenient. But the question is, will the image hold up? Will the user interface hold up? Is this something that could actually compete against those? So again, that's why we're gonna try to get this puppy plugged in in just a moment here. I'm not gonna waste any time with this unboxing other than just getting all of the plastic wrap off of this. So let's just get everything out here. This is our camera. We have our power cables. It looks like we have a, a separate one for maybe uh, European plugs. Um, so completely separate cable from the American plug. And uh, our little power brick here. And a few more odds and ends. Um, this cable we're not going to use today. So I'm just gonna pop this back in the box, make sure there's nothing hidden underneath. And that's it, so no frills, but that's okay. We're not looking for frills, we're looking for a good image. So first overall impressions, the uh, the whole thing is made out of plastic and you can definitely tell that by the feel, but most of these PTZ cameras are plastic, so you're not really going to find them made out of metal unless maybe you went into the higher end level stuff. Uh, probably 10 grand and above, and even still, they probably use a lot of plastic. It's more the sensor that they're using. There might be some weather uh, weather sealing and things like that. 
This, I would say, is certainly not weather sealed. I can see right on top here, there's actually, um, you can see on our overhead camera, this is kind of like a, a graded mesh, and I imagine maybe this is for heat to dissipate to just keep the camera cool. But I will say I'm happy to see that there's a lens cap that came with it. So nice little silicone lens cap to protect the lens. That's something that didn't come with my Canon PTZ cameras, and they cost, I think, more than twice as much. So just looking at this in general, uh, there's a mount on the bottom. It looks like your typical quarter 20 mount. Um, I see we've got just the Feel World label. You can see the, uh, the model label on there and serial number. And then there's actually a dip switch down here. It looks like there's a, uh, an updating mode or a working mode. And depending on what you put the dip switch in, probably gives you the ability to put some updates into this. Um, on the back of it, we've got a few ports here. So we've got an RS-232 in and out, an RS-485. Uh, I'm not going to be really using any of that. I'm focused more on the SDI and the HDMI outputs, as well as NDI later down the line. We'll have to get an NDI decoder to use that. Uh, and then, of course, we have our power DC 12 volt so let's get this remote out, and uh, I'm going to take this. This is the RS-485 um, connector. I'm not going to be using this, so I'm just going to toss that to the side. So let's start off with getting this baby powered up and connected in. Uh, let's get our remote out. I wonder if it came with any batteries. Oh, look, a little another piece of plastic to cover it. Uh, it was in a plastic bag already. Don't know why that was necessary. So first things first, it looks like we need a couple of AAA batteries. So I'm gonna step aside, grab some AAA batteries so we can use this, and I will be right back. Okay, so it's two AAA batteries that we'll need for this remote. I'm gonna go ahead and pop them in real quick just to make sure that we can actually get this thing on and running. And let's get our power in. We've got some twisty ties just to take off of the power brick. Um, it's nice and small, which is convenient. I think if I had to uh, hang the power brick off of a, a C-stand or one of those knobs, you know, I could maybe just gaff tape it onto a stand. Um, so I do like it when it's not like a big hefty thing that's just dangling there and pulling on the port. Um, in general, for this usage case, we're gonna be powering this over ethernet. So it's just going to come over the Cat5 or Cat6 cable that we use but just for demonstration purposes and doing this unboxing, uh, it's just a little easier right now to set this up with our power cable. Two prong in case you're wondering. Um, so shouldn't have any issues there with any cables. Let's get this plugged in. And uh, I've just got some cables hidden back here behind the desk. Go ahead and plug this into our brick. And I want to power this on, but before I do, I'm also going to plug in an HDMI cable so we can see the feed that's coming out of this. Um, and that, that way we can just see what actually happens when this boots up. So HDMI cable is just being recorded here for the purposes of this shoot. And we'll plug in our HDMI. And let's get our power plugged in. I'm gonna guess it's gonna initiate and do a little spinny move, kind of like my other Canon cameras do when they start up. So I've got this plugged in. I'm gonna let it kind of do its thing. Let's see maybe how long it takes for this to start up until we can see an image. And uh, we will take it from there. It's usually about a, a good, I'd say 60 seconds or so on the Canons. And it looks like right now you can now see our image. Our camera just popped up on screen. We've got some on-screen displays, so it's giving us the IP address just at the very beginning. That way we could probably log into a web-based version of their control software and make some adjustments. But we also have our remote here, which I'm just going to use for the purposes of testing. So let me get our lens cap out of the way. I'm gonna probably move this guy towards the corner of the desk so I can actually get a shot of myself here. And this way, you'll actually be able to see the quality of the camera. Now in comparison, the camera that you're seeing straight on on me, that's a Canon C70. Uh, the Canon above, up top here, that is a Canon M6 Mark II. So cinema camera, very small mirrorless camera, PTZ camera, so it's hard to compare these images side by side 
right off the bat. It's also important to know that this is going to get you a very different image look and feel uh, compared to the DSLR lenses. You know, again, that f-stop on there is going all the way up to 3.5 by the time you're at the furthest end zoomed in. So you're not going to get that sort of depth of field look. You're not going to get that blurred out background. So let me go ahead and use the remote here. I'm just going to see if I can guide this up to me. Ignore my, uh, my busted arm here. And this is just the shot straight out of camera. Uh, I have not adjusted any white balance. I have not changed any of the settings. This is just the immediate shot directly out of the camera. And uh, just spinning it around using, there's a little keypad here uh, on the remote. So let's play around with a couple things. Uh, see what we can do with this. We'll kind of play with the zoom. We'll test the focus, see if we can switch it between auto and manual, and uh, just do a little continuation of this since the unboxing part itself is pretty uneventful. Uh, so let's go ahead and test zoom first. So right now, let's make sure that this is actually zoomed out all the way. So I'm gonna zoom out, and it looks like it sure is. So this is the widest that it will go, and the distance here, I mean, if I stuck the remote out, I'm basically touching the camera lens. So the camera itself is maybe two and a half feet, give or take, away from me. Uh, it's very, very close. And so that would explain why we're getting a pretty close up shot. But I would say that, you know, if you're using a PTZ camera for some of your work, whether it's like just at home and doing any sort of vlogging or anything like that, then, you know, I think this would be a pretty well positioned shot. Uh, if you're doing anything like product reviews or things like here where we need this desk space, it's probably a little too close. But I will say I actually like the fact that it's a little bit closer because this gives me the benefit when I'm zooming in to the other side of a room. So with that, let's go ahead and zoom in. This is probably going to zoom in way too far for how close it is to me, uh, but let's see what we get. Okay, I am now zoomed in all the way. And as you can see, it took quite some time. Ooh, I gotta shave. It took quite some time for that autofocus to catch up. And so that's something that I would wanna be paying attention to, especially if we're using this in a live stream setting, is that if you're going to change up these things on the fly, you wanna make sure that you can take the camera live uh, when it's actually in focus. So. Let me zoom out here. I'm noticing that it's probably on auto white balance right now. It's looking a little bit bluish compared to the warmer picture that we're getting out of the Canon C70. Uh, so that's something too that I'll probably want to be setting a, a an exact Kelvin count on the white balance. And I don't see anything directly on the remote that's going to allow me to do that. So I'm thinking this is probably something where, uh, you know, we might have to do this using a web browser and I'll check the manual in just a little bit here. So again, the zoom, just show you a zoom test. Let me, uh, let's see if I can, I'm gonna turn this guy, find something across the room that I could zoom into. So we've got our set back there, our light bulbs. And this is good because it's pretty dark. Okay, so that's in all the way. And it's a really dark image, but I'm gonna see if it catches focus or not. And indeed it does. Uh, that's actually very impressive for how dark the rest of the room is and the fact that I zoomed in all the way to 20X. Um, it does take a second or two to hunt and find that focus, but the fact that it picked up on the light bulb over there and uh, got it completely in focus and stayed in focus, I think that's something I've, I've seen other PTZ cameras do is they tend to hunt back and forth um, and just keeping this shot up for a few seconds here, I don't see any of that hunting. Now, would that change if there's motion? Probably. So if this is like somebody walking across the stage, you definitely want to make sure that the stage is lit well. Let me go ahead and zoom back out just a little bit. And let's see if I can adjust the focus here. I'm guessing because it's on auto, it's not going to let me do anything. Let me hit, there's, a, there's actually a manual and auto button on the remote. I'm going to hit manual, see if that changes over. And sure enough, it does. So now I can manually use this remote to pull focus 
uh, on my own, or I can just hit auto and switch it back to auto and let it do its thing. Now, it's nice to switch it back to auto and realize that, again, it's not doing that hunting thing, so it is detecting that the image was already in focus, and that's a nice thing to know, too, just for overall usage of a camera like this, that it's not going to constantly hunt. So just first impression right off the bat, that is something that's impressive for me coming out of a PTZ camera. Let me go ahead and zoom all the way out here. All right, that's zoomed all the way out. And I'm actually rotated, you can see here. So let me rotate this back to facing me. And I'm gonna bring this back over for our overhead shot here. So just so you can see right now, this is the front of the camera and it's facing di almost directly at me, almost perfectly straightforward. I'm gonna get it over just a little bit. Okay, so now it's facing directly at me and I wanna show you the rotation of this and how far it goes. So I'm gonna take it all the way to this side and it looks like it's just shy of about 180 degrees that way. Um, 180 would be more like this. So we're probably getting somewhere in the neighborhood of 165 degrees this way. And then I'll go back the other way. And again, it's stopping at about the same amount. So it won't do a full 360 degree turn. This is probably just a limitation of the wiring inside, but most PTZ cameras aren't going to do that full turn anyways. Um, but it's very nice to see the fact that it's getting probably somewhere in the neighborhood of, I would say 320 to 330 degrees of rotation all the way through. And I'll show you again from one side all the way to the other. So you can see in this top down shot, this is a full rotation all the way around. So it's pretty close to that 360 degree mark, which is fantastic if you're putting this up on a light stand and you wanna reach multiple areas of a room to have multiple shots. So let me bring this back over to me. And one thing that people might question or think about is, let me push this a little ways away here. I'm gonna use this camera for a moment just so y'all can kind of see the quality and get an idea. So one thing that people might think about with these cameras is one, will this image have any lag between uh, the other cameras uh, because it might be coming over NDI and that's something we'll have to test later down the road. Uh, HDMI and SDI might also be worth it just to see how it is in sync with the other cameras too because this is right now being recorded into an A10 mini extreme ISO. And then the second part is thinking about how loud this is. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this directly under my boom mic here and just have it do some rotating and just let you hear that so you can get an idea. I think it's pretty darn quiet. Uh, you're definitely gonna hear it if you're in a small room like I am and there's no other sounds. But let me bring this front and center here and let's just do a full rotation. I'm gonna start it all the way from one side and I'm gonna be completely quiet just so you can hear the noise. And chances are the mic didn't even really pick that up. Uh, it's very, very low. It's just a little like whir, little whirring noise. Um, so, you know, if you're worried about sound, I would say as long as this guy is not within a couple of feet of your microphones, then you're not going to have any issues with sound. So I haven't looked into the manual yet and admittedly, I probably should have. Five hours later. Let's go to our friendly manual and see how user-friendly the manual is for being able to set a preset. So all in all, it looks like this manual is pretty in-depth. It's got some information about mounting it, uh, the product overview. Let's see if we can find, okay, we've got our video format. So we can do 1920 uh, in various frame rates. It looks like it does interlaced and progressive got some details about the camera and we're looking for okay our remote control so here we go this goes over the entire remote control it looks pretty in depth so let's go ahead and see if we can figure out how to set uh, one of these presets okay presets running and clearing Preset setting, to set a preset position, the users should press the set preset key first, 
and then press the number key to set a relative preset. Note 10 preset positions in total are available by the remote controller. Preset running. Press a number key 0 through 9 directly to run a relative preset. Okay, so these F1, F2, F3 buttons are going to be function buttons and not a uh, preset location. So I've got the camera in a position right now. I'm going to hit set preset. I'm going to set this to 1. And then I'm going to move the camera back closer to center. Let's get it centered up. And let's maybe tilt it up. And I'm going to hit set preset and hit 2. And then let's go all the way to the other side. And I'm going to zoom in on our Canon cinema camera here. So I'll zoom, get right in on the camera. And I'm going to hit set preset and button number three. OK, so assuming that those directions worked, I should be able to hit 1. It'll recall to the 1 position and so on. So let's hit 1. Look at that. Fantastic. So I recalled the 1 position. We'll hit 2. And we will hit 3. Pretty darn quick on the movements, and it looks like it picked up focus relatively fast on the Canon camera, despite the fact that it's in the dark. So again, I'm getting pretty impressed here with that setting. Now, as far as these F1, F2, F3, F4 buttons, it just says camera remote controller address setting. Um, and then it says camera address number one, camera address number two, camera address number three, and number four. So I'm going to skip over this for now. I think this is something that I'll have to look into a little bit further in depth before I can speak as to how that works. Um, it looks like there's some menu settings, so I can hit the, uh, the menu. Let's see if this pops up on screen. I'm going to bring it back to position number two. Hey there. And we're going to hit menu. Let's see what we get. OK, so we've got some language set up for English. We can go down to setup. And we've got some information as far as the Visca settings. Um, if I need to go back, let's see if I, okay, let me go over and change some of this stuff. Let's hit menu to go back. All right, camera settings. All right, so we've got some exposure, color, image, focus, noise reduction. PTZ settings, so we can set the zoom speed. Uh, we can make sure that it either zooms in slow or fast, depending on what you're looking for. Video format, so here's where you can change your formats between uh, 720p 60, 720p 25, 50 if you're in European countries, all the way up to 1080p 60. Hit menu to go back out and we can restore our default settings. So all in all, the uh, remote itself is pretty darn easy to use, and the fact that they've provided a manual that has pretty decent explanation of the settings I think is going to be very helpful here. One thing that I did want to do is go back into the menu, and I wanted to jump into the color settings if I could, um, only because I want to see if I can get this white balance fixed to a set color and right now it's the mode is set to auto now i can change it over to manual and now you can see we can go in and adjust some settings here um, so that's good that's pretty quick and easy to change over it looks like all right so now we're back in auto so i just wanted to make sure that that was something that could be quickly changed on the fly and I'm imagining you could probably change your white balance based on the presets that you're setting. At least I would hope so. I know that on other PTZ cameras, you can set the zoom, focus, the location of the camera, and even white balance if it's changing. And as it zooms over to that preset, it'll change to the setting that you've set it to. So there's a lot of fun stuff here. I'm really excited to be implementing this for a client of mine, and if they like it enough, then it might be part of my workflow as well. Again, just a quick reminder, this is a PTZ camera. So as you can see here, I'm gonna put the images side by side. Uh, you can see my face way closer than I ever wanted you to. Um, but the quality is going to be different. And so where would I put this into play? 
I'd probably consider putting this out in the field on a sunny day where I need to be able to zoom in on something or in an event hall that's really, really well lit because I know it's gonna get darker as it zooms in. I'm very surprised by how good the autofocus is doing in low light and how well it's compensating there. And uh, overall, I'm excited just to have a PTZ camera that's a thousand bucks and will save a lot of money for my clients and allows us to do uh, POE if we want to, SDI, HDMI, just having all that flexibility is great. So this is Zephan Blacksburg signing off from this little product unboxing overview. This is the Feel World uh, NDI camera. This is the 20X zoom model, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please go ahead and hit that like button below this video. Leave me a comment if you have any questions, and I will do my best to answer it. And of course, if you want to support me, a subscribe is always welcome. Thanks for watching.